Welcome back. In this video, we're going to finally compute the homology group, the first one, of the projective plane. So in the previous video, we were able to show that if you have any cycle, so I have some W and I have a one cycle, any one cycle W, um, then we know that W is homologous to some multiple of a particular one cycle, and it was this z that we chose. It went 3 to 4, and then 4 to 5, and 5 to 3. Um, so it might look like the homology group is then isomorphic uh, to the integers, right? Because for each integer g, we'll get, uh, it would seem, some homology class. Turns out, though, we get far fewer because of the following. Let's say I start with my 3, 4, 5, so there's my 3, my 4, my 5, but then I keep going and I go around some more. There's another 3, 4, and there's a 4, 5, and there's another 5, 3. So in total, I went around twice, so I'm, I'm really, when I do this bit, I'm looking at 2z. And when I do this, this is going to be the boundary of the entire uh, region. If you like, I can write it as the following. It's the boundary of, well, let's see, I guess. Uh, it looks like it could be a and b and c and d and e and f. And, well, we don't do G because of that little G there up top. Uh, but H and I and J and K. And how do I know? Well, as we saw in the last video, um, if I start adding up all these things, right? so I start, say, with A and B, well, the intersection right, of these two faces, this edge, is not going to get counted. Uh, if I keep going, here I go over to C, then I know that the intersection of B and C is not going to be counted. Um, so let's just go through the whole thing. You have D, D, and F, and H, and I, and J, and K. And what's all the stuff that doesn't get counted? It's the stuff that is in the intersection of all these. None of this stuff gets counted because everything is oriented in the same direction. And so the only stuff left is that which is on the outside. All right, now it could be that we're off by a sign, so I don't know, we'll, we'll check um, what happens if I had done, um, if I do the um, boundary map applied to A, let's see, one of those, uh, this could be 0, 5, 3, so we'll just write it down, boundary map applied to A, is boundary of 0, 5, 3, and we only care about the 5, 3 part. Um, so, but, okay, we can see this is going to be 0, 5, and it's going to be plus 5, 3, plus, or rather, minus, minus 0, 3. Okay, so we actually get it in the right order, so we must be doing it the right way. Okay, so we can see that doing twice z is actually a boundary. So 2z is in b1 of p. Of course, b1 of p is a group, so it's closed under addition. So 4p is in of p. 4z is in b1 of p. All right, and 6z and 8z. And in fact, more generally, we can see that any integer, even integer multiple of z, is going to be in b1 of p. Okay, so actually, uh, if you're, of course, you're, if you're a boundary, then you're homologous to zero. So that means half of these <laughs> integer multiples aren't giving you anything other than zero to begin with. Uh, okay, well, what about the ones where we don't have an even number, we just have an odd? Well, that's, that's, say, our z. All right, well, could the z be homologous 
to the zero. Well, if it was, then z would have to be the boundary of something. All right, so could z, could z be a boundary of something? Right, that is, could z equal the boundary of some guy? And uh, it's going to turn out the answer is no. So if it was, well, you know you'd have to have some combination of the faces. So you'd have like some multiple of A and some multiple of B, etc. All right. And so here's what I know, though. Um, every time I have one of these red X's up here, uh, well, that would show up when I took the boundary of all these. And the number of times that it shows up for A, it's going to have to be canceled out if I'm going to end up with just this boundary, 3, 4, 5. So the number of times it shows up for A has to be the same as the number of times it shows up for B. So in fact, I know that little a has to equal little b. OK, but similarly, the number of times b shows up, well, there you got your x there on the border with c. That has to be the number of, same number of times that c shows up. So a will have to equal b will have to equal c. And we just go around the whole thing and see actually all of these coefficients would have to equal each other. OK, so in fact, that means that if I could write z as a boundary, it would be the boundary of, well, whatever that is, we'll call it g times ra plus k. OK, and I can, of course, pull that out. g times del of a plus k. But we had just showed right up above that when you apply del to the sum of all the regions, you ended up getting 2z. So this ends up being 2g times z, right? Because this is equal to 2z. Okay, so that means that 1z, that's up here, has to equal 2g. So 1 has to equal 2g, but g is an integer. And this is no bueno, right? This would tell you g is 1 half. And that's definitely not an integer. Okay, so in fact, we know that z cannot be in b1 of p. And now we're really happy. So z is not in b1 of p. Uh, but of course, if you take any odd multiple, so say you have 2m plus 1z, and you subtract z, you'll get 2mz. That is an even multiple, so that is in b1 of p. So we conclude that there are actually just two homology classes, the odd multiples and the even multiples. So h1 of p consists of the class, I'll use brackets just for the, the equivalence class, of z and the class of, well, 2z, 4z, whatever you like, we can just use 0. Right? So that means that h1 of p actually just has two elements, and so it's isomorphic to z mod 2z. This is a torsion group, and it's our first example of finding a homology group that actually has some, some torsion instead of just a, a free part. All right, hopefully this helps us uh, move forward into the more theoretical aspects of algebraic topology.